a little in big news for Proximops community. Proximops just released Proximops Data Center Manager. I was in the middle of editing my AI video when I saw this announcement and I couldn't wait to make this video for you. For someone like me coming from VMware ESXR, this is huge. Why not? It's in alpha mode. So it's great for testing, but not yet worthy for production environment. Let's go ahead and deploy it so you can see just how impactful this PDM is. Props Mox, this is the best gift for saying goodbye 2024. Let's dive in and get started. All right, team, this is the announcement from Proxmox. I'll be linking this post in the description, so feel free to check it out. In this first episode of Proxmox Data Center Manager, we're going to install and test how it works. I've already downloaded the ISO image to my Proxmox VE, and I'm ready to start the installation. Let's go ahead and create a VM and start testing. For those who aren't familiar with how to create a VM, Check out my previous videos where I go through the step-by-step -step process of creating a VM and mounting ISO image. Once you set everything up, we can move forward with the installation. For those of you who have already deployed Proxmox VE, the installation process here would be very similar. Just follow the steps until the installation is complete. Now that the installation is complete, let's go ahead and access the web GUI for PDM. The port number is 8443. We're logged into the Proxmox Data Center Manager. The dashboard looks great, especially considering this is still in alpha version. Proxmox is clearly working hard to improve it. We can see a note and in the configuration section, we have options for time zone, DNS and network interfaces. There's also an access control section where you can add new users, set permissions and configure two-factor authentication. In the remote section is where we'll add a new server or our cluster. Let's start with adding a cluster. I'm heading over to my node, lab01, which is the first node in the cluster. We need to grab the SSL certificate fingerprint. So let's copy it as we'll need it to connect. Now let's go back to PDM and click add Proxmox VE. Enter your server's hostname or IP address along with the Proxmox port number, then paste the SSL certificate fingerprint we copied earlier. Then click connect to verify the connection. Once you see OK, we're ready to move to the next section. In this section, you need to enter a remote ID. This is just a name to identify your remote Proxmox VE. Next, input your Proxmox VE credentials. Since we're using a PAM user, set the authentication type to PAM. For the API token, make sure to give it a unique name so you can easily identify it later.
Once everything is set up, click scan to verify the connection. If the scan is successful, we can move on to the next step. And voila, you should now see that the system has detected all nodes in the cluster. You'll notice that the first node we chose to connect is duplicate. We can remove it and update the host name with the correct address. Because if we leave it as is, we won't be able to connect. If any nodes aren't appearing here, you can also manually add them. Once everything looks good, let's move on to the next section. Here, review your summary and click Finish. Now that we've successfully connected our cluster to Proxmox Data Center Manager, we can see that all the nodes have been added. Next, let's go ahead and add our single node server. We'll follow the same procedure as before, just copy the certificate and proceed with adding the server. Now that we've successfully added our cluster servers and single node to Proxmox Data Center Manager, you can see that all the VMs and containers from our servers are showing up. This is very promising. It's truly a game changer for Proxmox. We can centralize all our clusters and manage them from a single dashboard. This eliminates the need to hop between individual nodes and gives us more control and visibility over our entire infrastructure. What makes this even more exciting is the potential for seamless management and operations across multiple nodes and clusters without having to worry about scattered configurations. The ability to migrate VMs and containers from one node to another, right from this interface, is a huge step forward in streamlining workflows. In the future, this could make managing large-scale Proxmox environments a lot more efficient and less time-consuming. While it's still in alpha, the foundation is already in place for some truly powerful features down the line. Thanks for watching. That was my quick overview for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Leave us a comment as well. It's helping us to continue making great and easy to follow content. Thanks everyone.